All right, folks, good afternoon. This is our Wednesday midweek commentary. And I'm going to be showing you the dollar CAD today. I was going through the charts this morning, and I didn't like what I saw on Euro dollar, And I didn't like British Pound. And I was going through, and I saw the dollar CAD, which is a pair I haven't really looked at in about over a week or so. And I noticed that we had recently completed a market maker buy model. Consolidation, left consolidation, come back into consolidation, distribution, redistribution, smart money reversal, low risk buy, reaccumulation, and ultimately sending it up into the area over here for buy side liquidity. And this was the Wednesday candle we've already started because of the time of day. We've started a new daily candle. See, this is all Wednesday's price action in here. But if you look at the Fair value gap here with the order block there. Let's take the annotations off for a moment so you can see. Fair value gap, that's your discount array. And we were trading at a premium relative to swing low, swing high. This daily candle began with an opening here, traded up with a Judas, and then displacement with a downside. This was the draw on liquidity. The framework was the market maker buy model being completed. So everything's there. Now I'm going to drop down to a four hour chart. I know we don't talk much about that, but for top down analysis, because I've not been spending a lot of time with this pair. Okay, you can see the fair value gap there. And look real close. What do you see there? See that? That is a fair value gap there, which is what it traded up into there. So we have a premium array and the discount array prior to it obviously being traded to. Drop down to an hourly chart. Okay, you can see market trading up into on the basis of a Judas swing. Then we have this small little displacement here with a fair value gap there. And we'll drop down into a 15 minute time frame. So here is our imbalance on the four hour chart. And the high on this candle comes in at 127.04 and six pipettes. We drop down into a five minute chart. You can see how we traded right up into bear shoulder block with the fair value gap. Sells off in the New York Open. Heavy distribution, trading back down into that daily fair value gap for the discount array. Now this was the framework I used for the bread and butter setup that I'm going to show you as the latter portion of this video. But I want you to go over to the dollar index with me over here. Notice what took place last night. We had yesterday's highs. The market traded above yesterday's highs. And then we had the short term low broken. And it broke during London. Broke down there and then this is our low resistance liquidity run signature because we have a break in market structure after taking buy side liquidity and running above again once more on that mean threshold of bearish order block. So we have the south side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and breaker here. High, lowest, down close, higher high. We broke below it, breaker, trades up into it, and rebalances the sell side and balance buy side efficiency. That's between this candle's low, this candle's high. Market spends time in here and then in the New York session breaks lower. Notice that it was led by at 755 it created this candle here and then started breaking down. We don't really see it breaking down until 930 on dollar index. But the underlying framework was still indicating that this was probably going to break down 
and that would allow foreign currencies to go higher. So let's zoom in here. And take a look at this order block and all of this framework here. And I'll show you the bread and butter setups. Okay, bearish order block trades up into it here. I did a scaling in. I did one and a half percent as it was trading into the bottom of the breaker, and then when it completely traded back up into the breaker on a 15 minute time frame, the candle here I traded right on it, and you can see the high versus my entry 127.07 and seven pip bets. So I was off less than. Hmm, no, it's technically two pips and one pipette. So 2.1 pips from the actual high and the initial entry per scaling in. And I'll explain that when we do the latter portion of this video, the big figure 127 and four pipettes. Okay. And then first partial as we were trading below here, there, there, running down equity. There it is. Okay. And ultimately, for a day trade, which is not bread and butter, day trade would be holding until 10 o'clock to noon New York time. And that would be 10 o'clock there to noon there. And it completes the discount array on the daily chart right there inside of the London close time period. So bread and butter day trade but using the framework together to do whatever it, that fits your personality if you are a swing trader you could be short from this let's go back out here for a daily chart you could be short from here and try to aim for a run below these relative equal lows here and dig into this fair value gap. So using the same entry for bread and butter like I will show you in a moment, or day trading for the daily range, or for one shot one kill for an opportunity to make a run for these relative equal lows and the fair value gap here. Okay, so it's a matter of what what's your appetite? Do you want to just make money? and be in and out and be able to sleep at night and not spend a lot of time, well, that's bread and butter trading. You know, that's scalps. You can day trade or you can do swing trades, which is, again, using the same entries. And this is what a lot of the charter membership um, price action models teach you. Using these concepts by lower time frame entry techniques, but participating in different ways of trading like scalping, day trading, short-term trading, swing trading. Okay. So let's take a look at what I did today and I'll walk you through that as well. All right. You can see the 15 minute time frame breaker. I'm going to go in and short that because I'm at the low end of that bearish breaker. So one and a half percent has been established there using a 15 pip stop. And I'm targeting the low that was formed on the day. Okay, so you can see we're edging up in towards the premium high of that breaker. So what I've done was I, I've scaled in one and a half percent in the event that this doesn't completely trade to the top end of that bearish breaker. So if, if it just starts to break lower, at least I have a small portion put on and holding out for the best case scenario, which would be trading towards the top end or premium high of that pink shaded area. Okay, so now I'm anticipating it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna set up another order to go in again with the other 1.5% because I'm allocating 3% on the trade. I'm not suggesting that 3% is for you. I'm just showing you how you would scale in. That way you can get a 
entry, secure an entry to the trade, and in the event that it doesn't give you your best case entry, at least you have established something on the trade. Many times, growing up as a trader, my development forced me to learn by the hard way that my best case entries sometimes didn't offer me an entry. So when it's like that, like a breaker or a sell side imbalance, buy side efficiency, or buy side imbalance, sell side efficiency, when you're anticipating a range that may be possible for it to completely fill in, that's always the best case scenario. But sometimes waiting for that, you end up missing the entire move because of greed, okay, or fear of not getting the best scenario. This way, by scaling in, it at least gives you something on the trade. So it doesn't necessarily need to go to the premium high of that shaded area. And if it didn't, and it just started going lower, then at least I have something on the trade. But if it trades up towards the premium high of that range, of that breaker, again, I'm not trading zones. I'm trading the very specific levels. It's the high, the premium high of that breaker, which is the down close candle I'm shading here. The low of that down close candle, which is the discount low of the breaker. And then you would have mean threshold, which would be the midpoint. And as you can see, it's right there tapping the top end or premium high of that. So I'm now short. I just would have waited another second or so <laughs> when I got the high, but it is what it is. So now I have my position established between two entries, two scalings. That way I have a full 3% allocated. And let's see if this turns on a dime. Now I have a fair value gap here highlighted from the 15 minute time frame that might be significant for me on the downside. So should we trade down below it, if it comes back up in, I could end up taking another short entry because I want to try to do a an addition to an existing position or adding to a position that's in profit. Now, as I'm watching this, what I want to see is price start to move out of that breaker, but not slow and lethargic. It needs to like pull away from it quickly, reject it, in other words, like get really quickly away from that. So in other words, trading lower outside of that pink shaded rectangle. You're watching all of this. This is all live, real time. Nothing sped up. There we are. So this candle here ideally should come back down and overlap that last up close candle that went into the breaker. That's what I'm looking for. If I see that, then I have a pretty good indication that I'm on side, that means I'm on the right side of the marketplace, and I'm going to be targeting that blue line at the uh, low of the chart. But my limit order, I'm going to adjust that a little bit. There's the low I think it could touch, and now I've got to add the spread. Okay, so my limit order is adjusted, and the candle is delivering on the downside as I want to see. So far, so good. Now, watching this, I know the trade has a lot more potential to go lower, so... I could be leaving a portion on, but I really want to frame a, another bread and butter setup. So I'm focusing on this right here, and I want to see if, if we trade down below it and come back up in, 
uh, that would be an ideal scenario for me to go short and add more. And if it does, I'll just add another million leverage. So it'll be $100 more per pip. So I'm not concerned about this price action here because we went down and overlapped the entire up close candle that ran into the breaker. So it completely overlapped that and went down below it. So I'm confident. I don't think it's going to go back above the high that's formed inside that breaker. Now it's just a matter of submitting to time and waiting for it to deliver on the downside. Okay, very nice how it just traded through. I want it to remain heavy like it is here. Very nice. All I'm doing is highlighting that I don't think it's going to go back up into that breaker anymore. Now this area here, if it can trade back up into that, because we completely smashed through the other 15 minute time frame fair value gap. So now I want to reduce it to the five minutes that I'm working off of here. If it can trade back up into the discount low or consequent encroachment or the premium high of that fair value gap, I will add to that. So it's below these lows here. We saw a shallow run all in here. That was too shallow in my opinion. And I think we're going to go down deeper today and maybe into tomorrow. But for the purpose of bread and butter setups, 20, 30 pips, you know, getting paid. I'm adjusting the stop now. I do not believe that I'm in jeopardy if it runs back up. It's just going to go to that lower level five minute fair value gap. So I can put my stop loss below my entry. Normally, I wouldn't be in a hurry to move the stop loss down below my entry. But given the market structure that's in play here, I have a breaker. I have the market trading down below two fair value gaps, one from a 15 minute time frame that was on those trend lines that I removed. I was waiting for it to possibly trade up to that, but it didn't do that. And now we're below the fair value gap that's annotated here from the five minute chart. So if it trades back up to that, I'll be interested to go short. And again, I'll add a leverage of 1 million which is equivalent to approximately $100 per pip. In addition to what I already have established as a short. Now, I'm not interested in taking, um, watching it here. I'm thinking it might give me the additional entry. really close. I want to see it touch the bottom end of that rectangle. If it touches, as soon as it touches, I'm pressing the button. My eye is watching the candles formation and it looks like I may have missed it. In other words, it's not likely to get up there, which is fine. It's actually better that it doesn't do it because it acts as a breakaway gap. And that fair value gap not being traded back to, not even towards the discount low that would indicate that this could really become a big range down day because it would be acting as a breakaway gap so the market's nice and heavy here i'm going to see it run down below that blue shaded area but i want to take first partial right below where i have the original sell side liquidity pool because i could be wrong it could go just down below that once more and then reject and not go anywhere. So I'm going to take a partial here. So now I've secured a nice profit. Now I'm looking to take another portion. With bread and butter, you're not trying to be the all-star at capturing the entire range move. That, that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to just secure pips, get paid. Another partial has been taken. Now I'm going to drop down to the one-minute chart so you can appreciate the entries on the candles. Nice on the high. 
I'd be lying if I said it didn't feel good. <laughs> so I'm watching to see if we can trade below that blue line. And if we approach it again, I'll look to take another portion off. Stop has been lowered in the event that if it starts to go higher from here, I don't want to be a participant of any deep retracements beyond that point. Okay, get ready to take a partial again. I'm waiting to see. My eye is right on that candle and watching and waiting to see if it goes below the blue line. Okay, if it trades below that blue line, as soon as it trades below it, that's when I click the button. I'm not looking at the profit. I'm not looking at any numbers. I'm just watching the candle and waiting for it to dive underneath that blue line. Running down equity. And we're almost there. There we are. And now the remainder is the equivalent to a standard lot. I, drink, I drop the stop loss down to a level where I don't care if it stops me out at this point. But now I realize, going back and looking at the other higher time frame charts, I moved the stop loss down too fast because it, it's likely to pull up on me and stop me out. So I'd rather close the trade without being stopped out because I don't want to adjust my stop back higher. So to remove that, I'm just going to close the trade here. But you'll see later on, it does go higher than that. So I close that. And there's your price delivery from the breaker down into the sell side liquidity pool. Now I'm going to take you over to what I was watching and where that blue line is on the lower level. It's anchored to the discount low of that buy side balance, sell side inefficiency. That's right here. And that's the premium high. So all that buy side and balance, sell side efficiency, that is the range that I was watching it overlap and trade into. And I'm just thickening it up to accent the range that I had in mind for the bread and butter setup, but utilizing the sell side liquidity pools as I indicated here in my annotations. That's what it looks like naked, and that's what it looks like with the levels and annotations. So I think it's obviously going to be a, a larger range, but for bread and butter purposes, you can utilize this as well for day trading short-term trading and even swing trading if that's uh, more in line with your personality. Hope you found this insightful. Until next time, be safe.